customer states, it's an older machine. My mother had it before I did and it's never been serviced. Did you just call your mom old? There's not anything specifically wrong that I can tell, but especially after watching your TikTok videos, I know it could use a cleaning. I know you have how-to videos, but I don't trust myself and would rather pay to make sure that my machine is in good working order and will continue to last. I think we can do that. It's missing the black knobs for the levers, and if you can replace those, it would be appreciated. And even if it means a delay in how long it takes to get back, could you make a video of you servicing it for me? Let's do it. All right, let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart. That's not supposed to do that, but we can fix that too. We'll go ahead and take this front cap off. I can tell this thing is going to be delicious. As always, we're gonna take a listen. It doesn't sound bad, but it doesn't sound good. Let's keep moving. Let's go ahead and take off this back cap. It's just this one screw. Now this cap can pull out in a way. Look at all that crust. This machine was manufactured in 2001, so this is 22 years of love. Now I can tell just by listening that this bracket right here is loose. And that'll cause a lot of low vibration and rumbling noises. Now there are two nuts that hold this bracket into place. One right there and then one on the other side in the same spot. Sometimes tightening those down will fix that rumble, but oftentimes it does need replaced. Moving along. Let's go ahead and remove this beauty band so we can see what kind of treasures await. With the screws out, this band just pops off. That is some 18 karat grime right there. So all of this is a combination of leaked oil and just baking debris that uh, got up behind that band. Yummy. I want to, I just, I, I shouldn't. It was tempting though. Next, we need a hammer and a punch. We're going to go ahead and punch out this pin. I tap that. With that pin out, this planetary should just pull down away from the machine like so. Ugh. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Look at that stuff. Next, we need to remove these five mounting screws. Look at how coated and crud that one is. Let's just clean this one up a little bit. We got a few more body screws to remove. We got two here and then one on the back on each side. With the screws out, we can go ahead and split this head unit. Oh, look at that. Now you can tell almost all of these gears have no grease in between the teeth. Now that's gonna result in a lot of excess friction. It's gonna cause these things to wear down faster. Eh, it's about the same in the upper housing as well. Let's go ahead and remove this gasket. We are going to replace that. It's now time to remove all of this old grease. And there is a lot of it. This is honestly my favorite part. It is quite satisfying. We're gonna use the old mushroom tip kung fu grip to get this grease off of the shaft right here. I love these little grease picks for getting into all the crooks and nannies. And there's a lot of them because we actually clean in between every single gear tooth. So we're gonna need to pull out this shaft, but we're actually gonna have to pound it first to knock it up. And once it's knocked up, it reveals this little pin here that you can just remove by hand. Back to work, we need to remove this planetary shaft, which will then allow us to remove this center gear. Now take note, there's generally a washer under here, sometimes two, there's one still stuck to this gear. Now to just clean out the rest of this housing. Now we went ahead and replaced this worm gear because it was pretty chewed up. Now that the gears are all cleaned up, it's time to start replacing these handles. We're going to start by removing this set screw right here. Now if the head of your machine is not locking down into place, these are the steps that you're going to want to follow. There's also one little flathead screw right here that we have to loosen as well. It's just a little threaded rod that runs through that hook to hold it into place. Now we can simply remove this lock. We'll take our new one here and we'll just drop it down into place. Then we'll slide in our little screw and tighten that back down. Now for our set screw, see there is a little spring washer right here. Take a look at the contour on that spring washer. When we tighten this back down into place, it's going to put compression on that spring. Now we want to get this nice and tight. The next thing we want to do is run this lever a few times to make sure that this screw isn't trying to back itself out. So we want to put this thing in the lock position. We want to put some pressure on the base right here with our hand and lift pretty hard just to make sure that this isn't going to slide out of place. Now sometimes just tightening this screw back down because they do get loose over time will fix the lock not engaging. But if this screw is backing itself out or the lock pops out of place when you put pressure right here, then you're going to want to go ahead and replace that little spring washer. And also add a little dab of Loctite to the threads of this screw right here. And that should take care of your issue. Now for the speed lever, let's go ahead and remove this screw. Now if you're running into the issue where your machine will not stay powered off, it's because this screw is too loose. Tightening this down will make this firmer so it won't pop into gear. Now I know this is a long video, but we're discussing a lot of fixes here, so stick around. Now with this screw removed, this handle is just kind of pressed into place. You'll see that there's a little nub right here that fits into that hole. We'll go ahead and drop our nub into place and then reinstall this screw. We tighten this down just far enough to where this stays firmly in place. It's not too hard to switch the gears, but it also doesn't pop into gear. Now we can start re-greasing this machine. We're going to insert this shaft, put the new washers back into place. Then we can go ahead and reinsert our pin and then drop this back down into place. That pin sits right in these channels. Now we can give this baby a nice solid coating. That's looking better. 
Now we're ready to drop the housing back down into place. Now I'm gonna come through here and clean all of this up. And she is coming together nicely. Look at that shine. But we're not done yet. We still gotta hit the band and take care of this planetary as well. Now we're cooking with gas. Now this thing doesn't sound terrible. When you push this back into place, take a listen to that. That lets us know that if we try and tighten this bracket back down into place, that everything is gonna be out of whack. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to change this whole rear end. Take a look at how filthy and how loose that bracket actually is. This center bearing is just gonna be completely out of whack. Oh yeah, take a look at how loose that bearing is. All right, take a look, we got a whole new rear end here. Let's go ahead and get that installed. Now to keep these nuts from coming loose again, we're gonna go ahead and replace those with nylock nuts. Just one of the few preventative maintenance things that we do to make sure that these things run better. 